Hey everyone, and welcome to this video. I'm Dave from Hyper Clubben. In this video, we have recorded specifically for Hi-Fi Weeks. During Hi-Fi Weeks, we celebrate our best brands and real Hi-Fi. And today we have invited Bowers and Wilkins to celebrate it together with us. So welcome, Maurice. Thank You're you. the brand activator for Bowers and Wilkins. Yep. And you have prepared a nice presentation for us as well. Yes, I do. Uh, so I would say the floor is yours. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dave. Um, we appreciate the invitation. And first of all, I would like to say uh, that, that we hope that everyone is staying safe and healthy nowadays. Um, my name is Maurice van Oelen and I'm part of the Sound United brand activation team in Europe. Together with us today as well is Andy Kerr. Andy Kerr is the product marketing director. And unfortunately, Andy is not here today as he is located in Southwater, where our research and development facility is. And that's based in the UK. Well, the plan for today is what I would like to talk about is I would like to go through our new Bowers & Wilkins music app and he will then follow up with introducing two of our newest products and he will then explain you the technologies behind the 600th anniversary edition and the 700th signature and what makes these speakers so special. After he's finished with that, we have a Q&A with questions that will be answered from, either by us or by Andy. So let's move on with the Bowers & Wilkins music app walkthrough. I will just grab my phone. So in order to get the full functionality, the first thing you're going to want to do is to see if your system is up to date. You can check this here, and once this is done, you can start streaming. So in your streaming service, your, your Bowers & Wilkins music service, you can see your playlists that are made for you. Well, this playlist is uh, across multiple streaming services, and this is the music you like across these platforms. Beneath that, you have the recently played lists, and then we have the Bowers & Wilkins playlist. So the Bowers & Wilkins playlist is the music that we like and we want you to listen to. We have the recommended radio stations and beneath that you have the separate streaming services. For instance, Tidal, TuneIn, NTS, SoundCloud. And I can add more services like Cobus. Well, going into Tidal, you can see that this is just the data pulled through from Tidal. And this is your overview of Tidal you had in the initial app from Tidal. So here you have your playlist as well your, from Tidal itself. And moving on to that, we can start playing music. So if you start playing music, you can pick whatever song you like. So press on the song and you add to a room. So in this case, I've chosen the bedroom. I've set up three different rooms. So the bedroom, kitchen and living room. And start playing music. I can add whatever room I like. And the main benefit of our formation enabled products is that we're making use of the formation, um, the low, extremely low latency of the formation wireless mesh. So now I can add the rooms and um, the, it will be perfectly synchronized throughout your home. With the new app, there's also a new library function. I'll show you here. So this is the library with all your playlists throughout your streaming services that you are linked to, which means you have your Cobus playlist, your Tidal playlist, or whatever tune-in podcast you have. Also the search function, this searches across all streaming platforms, services. Okay, so this is a quick walkthrough of the Bowser Wilkes Music app. It's only recently been launched, but we see that a lot of people are already using it and we hope that more people will start to use it because it's very convenient and it's much better than the app we had before. And I will now hand over the word to my colleague Andy Kerr. As I said, he is the product marketing director of Bowers & Wilkins and he will now explain you the new technologies of the 600 series and the 700 series signature and he will then have a new announcement on some of our new products. Hi everyone, this is Andy Kerr from Bowers & Wilkins in the UK. I apologise that of course because of the circumstances around the coronavirus I'm unable to travel to join you to be there in person to present for Hi-Fi Clubben but I thank everyone there very much for the opportunity to be able to at least present this way. I'm going to take the next few minutes to go through our new 700 series signature plus our 600 series anniversary edition. I'm also going to give you a chance to have a look at some exciting new product we have come up for 2021 and also answer some questions. So I'm going to begin with the 700 series signature. So let's look in more detail at the 700 series signature. First we can discuss the heritage. The original silver signature was launched in 1991 and it marked two important occasions in the history of Bowers and Wilkins. First, it celebrated our 25th anniversary. Second, it was released as a tribute to our founder, John Bowers, who had very sadly died in 1987. Now, the idea behind Signature was to bring together all of the engineering and design thought 
that went into a Bowers and Wilkins product to that date. So very advanced in terms of the technology, but also very beautiful in terms of the finish. And the original model was a tweeter on top, two-way design, similar in size to Matrix 805. Very prestigious and very rare. It was joined uh, five years later by the Signature 30, a floor standing model, and then a few years after that by two Signature 800 series models, Signature 805 and 800. Then most recently we added the Signature Diamond, complete with a marble tweeter on top housing and a diamond dome tweeter. Now today we have launched the two new Signature models to our portfolio, the Signature 705 and 702, and we'll come into the details of those in just a moment. But the important point to understand is they stay very true to the heritage and the history of Signature, both in terms of their high performance, their tweeter on top configuration, but also their beautiful and unique finish. So we look at the two models. First, the 705 Signature, which is a two-way stand mount model using the tweeter on top configuration. It's a 165mm base mid-range cone based on the Continuum Cone technology, plus the Carbon Dome tweeter in the tweeter on top design with optional stands also available. It's joined by the flagship, the 702 Signature, which is a three-way floor standing design using the tweeter on top configuration with a 150mm FST mid-range, fully decoupled in the assembly, three 165mm base cones and a 25mm tweeter on top. Design detailing is very important. The finish is a sustainably sourced Datuk gloss veneer with nine coats of lacquer over the top, producing not only a very beautiful finish, but a very distinctive one. No two pairs of loudspeakers are the same. It's a unique finish to each model. They're also finished with a unique identifying plaque on the back, calling them out as signature models as opposed to standard products. Additionally, they have bright metal detailing at the front around the tweeter trim ring and the base mid or mid range cone. Now, in terms of acoustic performance, they have upgraded crossover componentry with new bypass capacitors that have been specially treated by Mundorf to improve the performance across both models. There are also upgrades to the low frequency component crossover in the 702. Just a quick reminder of the technologies inside a 700 series loudspeaker. Like the standard models, both designs use the high performance carbon dome tweeter, which is designed to bridge the gap between our aluminium double dome tweeter used in our 600 series and our diamond dome used in our 800 series. Its first breakup performance is 47 kilohertz, which perfectly positions it between the 38 kilohertz of the aluminium double dome and the 70 kilohertz of the diamond dome. You can look inside and see the design. It's composed of two sections. The front portion is a 30 micron aluminium dome that has been stiffened by a PVD or physical vapor deposition coating of carbon. The second section is a 300 micron carbon ring that is a profiled shape designed to match the form of the main dome and it's bonded to the inner face of that structure. The result is something that's incredibly stiff, very good at resisting distortion, but it's also light and that's important because that keeps it sensitive and that makes it easy to drive. So what we're looking at here is a measured response across the surface area of a cone. In this case, it's an aluminium double dome tweeter and we're pushing it upwards in frequency to a point where it's starting to get into distress. So you can see here it's at 36 kilohertz and you can see by that simulation the simulation is showing the cone bending and flexing in unwanted ways. Of course, it doesn't bend and flex quite that much, but the simulation essentially demonstrates that what we have here is a cone that's behaving badly and as a result is sounding harsh and uncomfortable. This is the carbon dome tweeter used in the 702 and 705 signature at the same frequency. And you can see clearly it's not bending and flexing in unwanted ways. It's behaving much better. If you look at the two side by side, you can clearly see the point I'm making, the aluminium double dome behaving very cleanly and the carbon dome having all sorts of distress issues. What we also have is the tweeter on top form. So this is a standard tweeter on top form. Again, this is a simulation. The simulation is showing the behavior of the tweeter on top as it's starting to move upwards in frequency and how it's starting to again bend and flex in unwanted ways. We no longer use this now, we have replaced this technology in the 700 series 
with a similar form but approved mechanical behavior. So now what we have is what we refer to as the solid body tweeter. It's actually milled from a single piece of aluminium and as a result it's very much more stiff and you can see the simulation there is showing hardly any unwanted vibration or movement or resonance moving through the system. The vibration and resonance is essentially simulated by a combination of warm colors, red and greens and so forth. And as you can see here, because this is almost exclusively blue compared to the preceding one, you can see as a result it's not having any of those issues and it's much quieter. And here's the two of them side by side. Now if we move in, you can see the whole assembly and you can see how that solid body aluminium tweeter uh, has the complete carbon dome, carbon dome diaphragm housed within. And we we'll take it apart and we can see inside and see that two part construction that I showed you earlier. So there we have it, that's high frequency. And the same system complete is included in both 702 signature and 705 signature. We move to the mid range. Uh, we have the continuum cone. This is the evolution of the cone material that we used before, the aramid fibre, the famous yellow cones that were Bowers and Wilkins designs for many years. Now that particular material was not actually owned by Bowers and Wilkins, it was licensed to us from a company called DuPont. And of course you'll know that material was often used in other things such as bullet resistant vests. In 2015 we replaced it with the new material which we refer to as the continuum cone. This is entirely owned by Bowers and Wilkins. It's our technology, not licensed from anyone else. And we use it to give improvements in performance and in particular reductions in noise that help improve the transparency of the system. So what you can see here are two cones side by side. And what we're gonna do is put a single impulse into each one of them. So it's a single click sound. What you can see on the aramid fiber cone is as that click moves out towards the edge of the cone, it generates a lot of noise or unwanted resonance moving through the system which is continuing to go on now. If you look quickly to the right hand side you can see the continuum cone which is operating in exactly the same time and frequency domain has gone almost completely quiet. One more time and we put that same impulse into the two cones again and you can see that result of side by side. The continuum cone will go much quieter, much quicker than the aramid fiber cone and as a result that will produce a sound which is cleaner, lower in noise, and more revealing of detail and more transparent than our preceding cone technologies. We married the continuum cone to an improved mid-range chassis. So in the 702 signature we have an FST mid-range chassis which is fully optimized and designed to be stiffer than the design in the outgoing model. It also has an additional system on the front of the chassis a tuned mass damper. This helps control resonance and make it even quieter. This is our old mid-range chassis and again remember those simulations I told you about where red and green show a lot of vibration moving through the system. This is at 4 kilohertz and you can see the alum aluminium mid-range chassis at the same frequency is virtually inert. There's the two compared side by side. Finally, to really maximize the performance of the mid-range, we put the whole assembly into a full decoupling housing, which essentially is an isolating locating rod with a spring assembly so that the whole mid-range cone is floating freely inside the cabinet. This has the benefit of reducing the amount of unwanted vibration and resonance that moves into the cone from the chassis, and in particular helps to isolate it from the effects of the low frequency driving that's within the enclosure. So there we can see that complete system in operation. And then we're going to take the continuum cone apart again just to remind you complete with that decoupled FST mid-range chassis with the tuned mass damper. Finally on the low frequency 702 signature uses a variation of a technology we introduced in 800 series diamond we call it the aerofoil profile cone this is a curved profile filled with an EPS foam material which produces a very light but very stiff base cone. You can see a standard paper cone on the left hand side uh, and again the Aerofoil profile cone operating at the same frequency and again you can see clearly that the Aerofoil profile cone is behaving much better, bending and flexing much less and as a result the sounds that it's going to produce are a great deal more accurate. 
If we look inside the system, we can see those three Aerofoil profile cones within it. And what we'll do is we'll cut across them to allow you to look inside and see that core, which is that lightweight foam, and in particular the shape, which we refer to as the Aerofoil profile, which by varying the thickness across the system produces something that is stiffer than a regular cone profile would be. So, to summarise, in both 702 and 705 Signature we have some very high performance drive unit technologies derived from, in some cases from our premium loudspeakers uh, in very beautiful and very distinctive designs. We refer to the whole package as something that has been crafted, honed and perfected. They can rival the performance of many speakers costing thousands more. They are obviously unique in terms of both their finish and their design. They share driving it technologies from the very proven 702 and 705 standard models and then they add considerably improved acoustic performance by virtue of their upgraded crossover design. And they build very much on the heritage and the importance of the signature name to the Bowers and Wilkins brand. And now I'm going to introduce you to the 600 series Anniversary Edition. It builds on 25 years of great sound, which of course is why we call it the Anniversary Edition. 600 Series is the entry level range within the Bowers & Wilkins portfolio and it's been available for some 25 years. In fact, that makes it the longest serving continuously available speaker range we produce after the 800 Series Diamond. And in that time, well over a million satisfied customers have had their first experience of how we make loudspeakers thanks to a pair of 600 Series. It's always been hugely successful along that way as well. We've never actually counted how many awards it's won, but we certainly know that it's plenty. Now, the important point to understand about 600 Series is we've always tried to make it affordable. So it's first and foremost about true sound, but at affordable price points. We choose deliberately to avoid certain things that would drive the price up, for example, like a highly polished finish, because we want to make this a very accessible loudspeaker. It's built for people who love music. Of course, everybody who buys loudspeakers, you might argue, loves music, but what we mean by that is you don't necessarily have to be a hardened audiophile, a hi-fi enthusiast. You just have to want to buy a loudspeaker that sounds great, whether it's with music or with film. You could even be quite a young buyer because, as I say, we've tried to make it attainable and affordable. Essentially, anybody who loves music, we believe, will love these. Let's look at the evolution. The story began in 1995 with a range that was on for four years. At the time, it was revolutionary because it introduced the yellow aramid fibre cone across every model, a technology that we'd not had in place before at affordable price points, and it was a huge success, winning multiple awards. It was followed in 1999 by Series 2, which added improvements to the tweeter, but also the Nautilus tube loading system and upgrade to the low-frequency cones. In 2001, we upgraded again with aluminium base drivers for three-way systems and the Flowport technology, and in 2007, we introduced the FST mid-range configuration for three-way loudspeakers. 2014 saw the introduction of the improved decoupled double dome high-frequency tweeter. And then our biggest change in 2018 with the massively improved continuum cone replacing the aramid fiber cone and bringing the 600 series into line with technologies recently introduced in 700 series and of course our 800 series diamond loudspeaker range. So now, in 2020, we introduced the replacement for all of that, our anniversary edition. So again, the important point to emphasize, we did not want to completely rewrite the rules, change anything too much. We want to make it a still attainable and affordable, but we want to introduce meaningful improvements and keep it as the best sounding loudspeaker range in its class, which of course it is or has been, we're very proud to say, uh, very successful, continuing to get great awards and reviews with all the critical press. Look at the design details. We have the improved tweeter shield design that says 600 series anniversary edition, and that's available in a light or a dark finish, depending on the finish of the cabinet around the loudspeaker. We have the matte white and the matte black finishes carrying forward. We have also introduced two new finishes. Now these are available regionally, depending on where the product is sold. In Asia Pacific, we have a red cherry finish, but for European countries, we have this the new oak finish, which we're very proud of. So there's the oak joined by the black and the white. Let's look at the range. We have the 607, which is the smallest model, which is a two-way vented box with a compact drive unit going through to the floor standing model, the 603. 
in more model, more model detail, the 607 anniversary edition with the 130 millimeter or five inch continuum cone. And as we said before, depending on region, it's available in the black, white, the oak, and in certain parts of the world, the red cherry finish. There's the detail of that one. And we can see it spinning around. Going into the 606, which is the similar configuration, another two-way design, but with a larger base mid cone, 165 millimeter. And there again, there's the detail. And then the three-way model, the 603, which has two 165 millimeter paper cone based units, plus a mid-range cone. Unlike larger loudspeakers that use the FST mid-range, this one is not decoupled, it's rigidly coupled, but again, that's important to reflect the price point of the product. And there it is with the oak finish. Finally, of course, if you want 5.1, uh, you can also add a center channel loudspeaker, the HTM6. This is a compact design available in matching finishes and uses a pair of 130 millimeter continuum cone base mid drive units. We also have subwoofers available in 8 inch and 10 inch configurations with a range of power, 200 watts for the ASW608 and 610, and 500 watts for the flagship, which is the 10 inch design, the ASW610 XP. And that's our complete recommended theatre package, the 603 Anniversary Edition Theatre with 603s, the HGM6 centre channel, 607 surround channels, and the ASW610 subwoofer. And there's also a matching stand, very affordable but still a very high performing stand, suitable for both the 607 and the 606, which we call the STAV24. So let's look at the technologies in detail. First, we have the decoupled double dome tweeter, which is a proven design with a first breakup of 38 kilohertz. This is a standard single dome aluminium tweeter going through a simulation, rather like the ones I showed you earlier on in the 700 series. And here again, you can see this is starting to bend and flex in unwanted ways. Remember that red and green color is a way of showing uh, unwanted energy or velocity moving over the surface of the cone and showing the point where it's really starting to generate distortion. And this is the decoupled double dome aluminium tweeter at the same frequency. And as you can see, it's behaving very much better, which reflects the fact that it's a stiffer design. And there's the two of them side by side. We also have decoupling. So this is a conventional couple, uh, coupled or rigidly mounted tweeter. And as you can see, as it's generating energy into the structure, you can see some of that energy uh, moving in through the cabinet and some of that being wasted in radiating the structure. In a decoupled assembly, you can see you don't get any of that. And as a result, much more of the energy of the cone is going forward into the room. And the end of that is that we get a more open and spacious sound. We also have the continuum cone replacing the aramid fiber cone. We've discussed the continuum cone already in the 700 series, so I don't need to go into that into more detail, but again, to remind you, a very high performance design. We'll go through that quickly. Finally, on the 603, we have the paper-based cone, which has very good behavior, very benign, and integrates into the system very well. One other important to emphasize, uh, we have improved crossover designs, rather like the 700 series signature, Again, using improved Mundorf treated bypass capacitors and also main capacitors being replaced as well. So you can see there in front of you, you'll notice the black elements there, the standard capacitors. And if I switch across here, you can see the upgraded capacitors in the new anniversary edition designs showing the outcome will be improved acoustic performance. So to summarize, the longest running, uh, most successful loudspeaker way to reproduce apart from the 800 series diamond Every model built on our premium continuum mid-range cone technology for exceptional performance, which is shared again with that flagship range. Updated uh, versions of all of the drive units that we've developed over the last few years. Uh, new finishes, including oak and in certain parts of the world, red cherry. Uh, updated lettering around the shield to really highlight that it's a special model. And most importantly, from an acoustic performance point of view, an updated crossover with new and improved components that deliver a more articulate and transparent sound. So that's the 600 series anniversary edition. So I hope you enjoyed the presentations on the 700 series signature and the 600 series anniversary edition. I'm going to move to questions in just a minute, but before I do, I want to give you a little sneak preview of some exciting new products that are coming your way inside the next month. So I'd like to introduce you to our new True Wireless in-ear headphones. 
So I'm proud to give you the opportunity to have a sneak preview of our new True Wireless in-ear headphones. First we have the PI5 which is available in the dark and the light finish you can see here. It's a CD quality performer, so based on the aptX platform. Of course, it will also work with mobile devices that do not support aptX, such as iOS mobiles. It uses the TWS platform for connection between left and right earbud. It can support uh, active noise cancellation with ambient pass-through capability to allow you to adjust the amount of noise cancellation. For example, if you want to hear a little bit more of the outside world when cycling. Um, it has two integrated microphones for high quality phone calls and has both USB-C wired and wireless fast charging with four and a half hours of noise cancellation playback on a single charge and full full recharges from the case giving you a total of over 24 hours of playback time. There's also built-in voice assistant support to enable you to request directions or launch other features from your mobile device depending on the model of phone that you have. That is joined by the flagship model which is the PI7 again available in the dark and the light finish. This supports true 24-bit connection from source to left and right earbuds complete with the aptX adaptive high performance platform. It also uses dual drive units with 9.2 millimeter base mid cones in each assembly plus balanced armature tweeters in each assembly as well, essentially recreating the configuration of a compact loudspeaker. This hybrid adaptive noise cancellation based on multiple microphones that automatically analyze, monitor, and adjust the noise cancellation to suit your environment. And there are still two microphones for clear voice calls as well. The case also has a very smart feature that allows you to automatically retransmit audio from a connected source, such as an in-flight entertainment system through to your earbuds. The same features in terms of wired and wireless charging with four hours of playback plus four full recharges available from the case, giving a total of 20 hours of use and the same voice assistant support as well. Both these models on sale in April. Right guys, that concludes our presentation and now I'm gonna take some questions. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Andy, for your presentation. It was very, very interesting. I hope everyone liked it. Uh, we still have some questions left to answer. So, um, Dave? Yes. Thanks, Andy. That was a really interesting presentation. We, however, do have some questions from our viewers. Um, the first question we had, and we received it a couple of times, is does the 702 and 705 series signature sound different than like the 702 and 705 S2 series? Yes, it does. Uh, you will notice improvements in resolution, in transparency and openness, in particular that sense of detail. And that's a reflection of the improved crossover components. Thanks, Andy, for your answer. Another question we received is, are there any plans for different finishes of the Signature series? No, uh, not currently. It's something that we are open to investigating, but as it stands today, we're going to carry forward with the existing finish, which we're very proud of, and is also very true to the heritage and the history of the Signature design. Good to know. Uh, another question, is the finer finish of the 702 Signature real wood? It's an Alpi wood, so it is real wood in one sense, but it's very sustainably sourced. Alpi, if you don't know, it is an Italian company. We've used them several times over the years to help us to produce very special wood finishes that are also responsibly and sustainably sourced. Uh, and to remind you, it's also then finished with nine coats of lacquer. Thanks for your answer. Um, a question we received many times, and I think people are very curious about it. Uh, the 800 series, will there be a D4 and when? It's a question we are always asked. Of course, the answer is yes, uh, naturally there will be an 800 uh, series diamond fourth generation. And of course, that's the correct way to describe it. D4 refers to the models. So the fourth generation of 800 series diamond, absolutely. Uh, we're working on it. Um, you would be disappointed for me to tell you anything different. However, I can't tell you when it will be produced because that would spoil the surprise. That's exciting news. Thanks. Um, Another question we received also a couple of times, uh, it's about the mid-range unit you use. It used to be yellow and now it's silver. Customers are wondering, uh, does that sound much better? Um, good question. Okay, so we remind ourselves of the presentations. Uh, I spoke about it there. The aramid fiber cone we used for many years, uh, going back to the 1970s, uh, for good reason, because it was a very proven technology, something we'd spent a lot of time refining. However, we always try to move forward with cone technologies, as I'm sure some of you will know. 
Uh, a long time ago, 800 series diamond used to use aluminium tweezers. Now it uses diamond, as the name would imply. So the same thing applied here in the mid-range cone. We developed the continuum cone technology. We're very proud of the performance that it offers, and we believe it's a big step forward in capability. And that's why we've moved so quickly to roll it into all of our loudspeakers. It's not the same material. It might look similar, but it's not. It's not the same material painted yellow or painted silver. It's a different material uh, with higher performance. Okay. Um, another question is about acoustics in the living room. Uh, how important is it to minimize the first echo, uh, install bass traps and what more? And what will Bowers and Wilkins say about that? That's a great question. So acoustics undoubtedly makes a big difference. We believe very much that uh, loudspeakers and the room are together, the system. Um, what we want to emphasize though is before you go down the route of changing things like uh, acoustic treatments and introducing one of those things, which we do believe in by the way very much, uh, it's also something you can fix more easily with just careful positioning, thinking about the way your loudspeakers go in your room, spending some time with a tape measure, positioning them correctly, using appropriate stands for example, and then even beyond that, which also is hugely important, you can do simple things using furniture, rugs, curtains and so forth. Essentially uh, a very minimalist home with highly polished wooden floors and lots of glass is going to sound quite bright and quite reflective. Um, uh, if you damp some of those things down with softer surfaces you can certainly help. Once you get past all of those issues um, then of course uh, low frequency treatments, uh, reflectors and so forth make a big difference and the first reflection points in a room which are typically the first boundaries adjacent or nearest to the loudspeaker both to the side, uh, to the floor and above are certainly key areas that are certainly are worth treating. Deal with those if you have big issues but my first advice is spend some time positioning your loudspeakers and you will sometimes be very surprised about how big a difference just a small amount of movement and positioning can make. Thanks, good to know. Um, another question we received, do you have wall mountable speakers in the pipeline? Uh, will you ever consider making wall mountable speakers or why not? We don't currently, we do have speakers that can be mounted on the wall. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with models like the M1 and the AM1. Uh, but we don't have what I think you're referring to, which is the, the narrow or shallow form factor cabinets that some uh, rival bands produce. Essentially, we are of the opinion that you need a certain amount of acoustic volume uh, for our, our drive units to operate, um, and we tend to prefer doing that in more conventional form factors. However, we do have other offerings that allow you to get great sound uh, discreetly, for example, as I mentioned, those two models that can be mounted on the wall, and also speakers that can be mounted into the wall and into the ceiling and still produce high performance. Thanks Andy for all your answers. Uh, we do have a few questions left for you, Maurice. Okay. There are about the Formation uh, music app. Yeah. Uh, I must say the Bowers & Wilkins music app. Yeah. Uh, will there be an optimized iPad version for that one? Yes, uh, I should have mentioned that. Um, there will be indeed an optimized version for iPad as well and other Android uh, tablets. So yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Uh, another question we received is why are there two separate apps for the formation enabled speakers. Yeah, so um, the formation setup app, the initially the home app, that's still existing now. Uh, we're still using it to set up and configure your speakers, but eventually that will change and that will be configured into one, uh, in, into one app, the Bowser Wilkins Music app. So the app will change? Yeah, so there will be one, will one, be... one app indeed. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Thanks Maurice Thanks for, your nice, for your nice presentation. Yeah. Also thanks to you, Andy, for all the answers to the questions. If you did like this video, please give it a like and take a look at the other Hi-Fi Week videos as well. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>